if one dollar equals one whole, which decimal and fraction represent the amount of money you had? If I take a look at these coins, I have a quarter, which is 25 cents. We have a dime, which is 10 cents. We have two nickels, which are each 5 cents. If I count all of his money, we have 25 plus 10, which is 35, plus 5, which is 40, plus another 5, which is 45. If I was going to write that as a decimal, like what I would see on a, a sign in a store, I would write 0 decimal. 45. Just by finding the decimal, I'm actually able to find my answer choice. But just to show you, I'm going to change that into a fraction as well. There's nothing in front of my decimal, which means there's nothing in front of my fraction, or there shouldn't be. I see that after the decimal, I have one. Two place values, the tenths and the hundredths. So that means that my denominator should be 100. And after the decimal, I have the number 45. So my numerator should be 45. 45 out of 100. Answer choice C was the correct answer choice. Question two, which equation shows an equivalent decimal and fraction? So they just want us to check, see which one is equivalent, which one is equal. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check, because if I look at all of my answer choices, I see that every single answer choice has a number in front of the decimal. So I should have a number in front of my fraction. Answer choice F has a number in front of the fraction. Answer choice G and answer choice H do, but answer choice J does not. So that's gone. I crossed it out already. Got three answer choices left, though. Now I need to look at my place values. I notice that all of my decimals have two place values after the decimal, which means my denominator should be 100. F has 10. G has 80. H has 100. So now I only have one answer choice left. And if I check the last part, after my decimal, I have the number 8. And look at that numerator. 8. My answer is H. Question three, Kyle wrote four equations showing equivalent decimal numbers and mixed numbers. Which of Kyle's equations is not true? So this time they want something that is not true, something that does not work. Next to all of my answer choices, I'm going to write a yes and a no. Or I could put true and false. Either one would be okay. I'm going to put yes and no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, and no. 
and I'm going to take a look at what I have. First, again, I notice that all of my decimals have numbers in front of the decimal. Any number that is in front of the decimal needs to be in front of the fraction. 28, 28 is in front. 58, 58 is in front. 60, 60 is in front. 7, 7 is in front. Okay, so far I can't say no to anything. Then I'm going to see how many place values. Most of my decimals have two place values after the decimal. That means they use the tenth and the hundredth, which means that my denominators should be 100. 100, 100, 100. Answer choice A is a little bit different because it only has one place value after the decimal. It only uses the tenth, so my denominator should be 10. Now I need to check, what about the numerator? Does the numerator match the numbers after my decimal? One and one. Yes, it matches. 22, 22. Yes, it matches. Five and 50. No. That does not match. Got a five and a zero, but five and 50 are two very different numbers. If somebody owes you five, if someone owes you $50, they can't just give you five back and say, here, I paid you all off. You would definitely want the rest of your money. And D, 19 and 19. Yes. So the only answer choice that did not match was C. Okay, number four. The model below is shaded to represent a number less than one. Here's what my model looks like. Which decimal and fraction is equivalent to the shaded part of the model? Since I have the model here, I could find the decimal first. I could find the fraction first. Either one is okay. The first time, problem one, I found my decimal first. So this time I'm going to find my fraction first. I know that this is a hundredth block. So my, I know my denominator has to be 100. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of any answer choice that does not have a 100 as a denominator. 100, 100, 100, 10. That's out. Now I'm going to count how many pieces out of that 100 did they shade in? I know if they shade in a whole row, that's 10 pieces. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. So there were 54 pieces out of 100 pieces that they shaded in. 4 out of 100, 54 out of 100, 54, 100. Okay, it looks like I have to find my decimal. There's nothing in front of my fraction. So I should have a 0 in front of my decimal. H has a 0 in front. G has a 0 in front. F has 54 in front. 
doesn't work like that. So I'm going to get rid of that answer choice. I'm down to two. I know I'm using 100 as a denominator. So I need the 10th place and I need the 100th place. 10th and 100th. I look at my numerator. I know what number belongs after the decimal. My numerator is 54, so after my decimal should be 54. Answer choice G has 0 0.54. Matches perfectly. Beautiful, wonderful. Answer choice H has 0 0.054. That does not match. G is my answer, or should be my answer. Number five, the model below, or sorry, the models below are shaded to represent the parts of two ice cream cakes eaten at a sleepover. What fraction and decimal are equivalent to the shaded parts of the models? So again, I could start off by finding my decimals first. I could start off by finding my fractions first. It's really up to you. Since I just started with the, dec the fractions last time, I'm going to start with my decimal this time. I can see that they ate one whole cake. So I know that my decimal, whatever it is, should start with a 1. If I take a look at answer choice A, it starts with a 0. Answer choice B, C, and D start with a 1. So that's OK. See that my models are cut into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 pieces. So all I need is the 10th place value. I don't need the 100th, because there's not 100 pieces of cake. There's only 10. If I look at the second cake, they ate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pieces. 1.9. One point nine zero one point nine. Normally, I would tell you that having the extra zero doesn't really bother me. Still has nine tenths, but I want to, you to look next to them. Answer choice B isn't wrong because of this extra zero. What makes it wrong is the fraction. Both fractions have a 1 in front, which makes sense because there's a 1 in front of my decimal. Both fractions have a 10 as a denominator, which makes sense. I had 10 pieces. I used the 10th place, so 10 is my denominator. Here is where answer choice B messes up. They ate one whole cake. That's fine. From the next cake, they ate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces. One and nine out of ten. Answer choice C says one and nine out of ten, but answer choice B says one and nineteen out of ten. That is not correct. Answer choice C should have been my answer. Answer choice D messes up because they have 1.09. Their frac or sorry, not their fraction. Well, that too, but their decimal is wrong. Not 1.09. They put the nine in the wrong place value. Question six. The models below are shaded to represent 1 and 4 out of 10. So that's really nice of them. They tell me what the fraction is. 
what decimal do the models represent? So all I have to do is change this fraction into a decimal. There's a one in front of my fraction, so there should be a one in front of my decimal. Answer choice F has a one. Answer choice G, there's not even a decimal. Answer choice H has a one in front of the decimal. Answer choice J has a 14 in front of the decimal. So already, I got rid of two answer choices. I see my denominator is 10, which means I only need the 10 place. My numerator is 4, so that after my decimal, I have a 4. 1.4, 1.04. Answer choice H, use the hundredths place, and we did not need to. My answer should have been F. Question seven. Ethna decorated 2.4 pies with whipped cream. They gave me the decimal. Which fraction is equivalent to this decimal number? Okay. So I know my decimal, 2.4. I know there's a 2 in front of the decimal. It means there should be a 2 in front of my fraction. Answer choice A doesn't have a 2 in front. Answer choice B has a 2 in front. Answer choice C has a 4 in front. Answer choice D as a two in front. I'm already down to two answer choices. Now there should be a two in front of my fraction. If I look at the decimal they gave me, there's only one place value after the decimal. They're only using the tenth place. So my denominator should be 10. Answer choice B has a denominator of 100. Choice D, the only one that could be it. And it's the only one that matches. Because after the decimal, I have the number 4, which means my numerator should be the number. Number 8, which equation below is not true? Is what I have. Again, they're asking for not true. So next to all of my answer choices, I'm going to put yes and no, yes and no, yes, and no, yes, and no. Now I can start checking. I see that all of my decimals have a number in front. So all of my fractions would have a number in front. One in front, there's a one in front. There's a three in front. Front. There's a two in front. There's no. So that one is in the one in the front. There's a one in the front. I've already found my no, but I'm going to just make sure and double check the rest of these. Two place values, which means that my denominator is 100. Denominator is 100. There's an eight behind the decimal. There's an eight as my numerator. That's a yes. One place value after the decimal. My denominator should be 10. My denominator is 10. There's a 4 in the tenths place. 4 is my denominator. That's a yes. Only one place value after the decimal. They're only using the tenth place. My denominator is 
10. The number behind the decimal is a 2. My numerator is a 2. That is also yes. So the only one that was not true was H. Number nine, the models are shaded to represent four different fractions. There's the fractions. Again, they're being pretty nice. They're giving me the fractions. Which decimal is not represented by one of these models? Said not, so again, yes and no for each answer choice. They put the fractions on the bottom, so I'm going to put the decimals on the top. I notice that none of my fractions has a number in the front, so I know that all of my decimals are going to start with a zero. All of my answer choices start with a zero, too. My first model is out of 100 pieces. My denominator is 100. So I need two place values, 10th and 100th. The numerator is 44. So behind the decimal, I should have 44. 0 0.44. I have a match. My next model, denominator is 10, so I'm only using the 10th place. My numerator is 4, and my decimal should be a 4. 0 0.4, I have a match. Next model, my denominator is 100. I'm going to put two place values. My numerator is 61. And my decimal would be 61. 0 0.61. No match. Last model. My denominator is 10. So I only need one place value, the 10th place. My numerator is a 7, but behind the decimal should be a 7. 0 0.7. I have a match. There's only one answer choice that did not match any of my models, and that would be answer choice A. Ian created the model below to represent the ounces of cheese he used on his pizza. Which fraction represents the ounces of cheese on Kian's pizza? Okay, this one, they just want me to make a fraction. So I don't have to worry about the decimal. This time I can see space between these lines. That's telling me that these are different models. So we have one whole model, two whole models, three whole models. So in front of my fraction, I should have the number three. F doesn't have anything in front, so that's out. G has three. H has nine, so that's out. J has three. Okay. Well, the last model doesn't have everything filled in. Let's see how many pieces they should have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have nine pieces. And if I check my denominator, how many pieces it's cut into, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 3, 9 out of 10. 3 and 9 out of 10. 3 and 9 out of 100. J is out. G should have been my answer. the last two questions are about the frequency table. So here they have the frequency table. They asked people in a class how many pets they owned. Seven people said they owned zero or one pet. Four people said they owned two or three pets. Three people said they owned four or five pets. And one person had either six or seven pets. Question 11 says, how many students owned three pets or less? So they could have had three pets, two pets, one pet, or no pets. Well, four people said they owned two or three pets. But there were some people who had even less than that. There were seven people who had less than that. And since they said less, I need to count them too. So I need to add the people that had zero or one pet and the people that had two or three pets. Seven plus four. If I add seven and four, I get 11. My answer should have been D. There were 11 people or 11 students in this class who owned three pets or less. Number 12. How many tally marks would need to be drawn to represent the number of students who owned four to five pets? All I need is this information. Four to five pets. How many students were there that said they owned four to five pets? Three. So my answer was three tally marks.